Welcome back. Whether you are looking to add some color or texture to your decor or just want an easy plant to care for, succulents, Courtney, there for you. I'm hoping. Gardening expert Angela Chandler is here with the 411 on succulents. You are the expert. I've told you this multiple times, <laughs> Angela. I kill everything that comes in contact with me. I'm trying not to make eye contact. Quick, Courtney's that. here. Hide the plants. Oh, it's going to be okay, I promise. <laughs> so where do we begin? Because a lot of people get in trouble with overwatering right. and not having the right containers for their succulents, yeah, right? Yeah, not the right container. It's, it's the container, it's the soil, and then it's the water. So succulents, for the most part, are shallow-rooted. So we don't want to put them in a tall container that has lots of volume of soil that doesn't have roots in it because that soil holds water and it, it can cause issues, fungal issues and things like that that crater the succulents. Oh. So low squatty pots are generally better for them. A few exceptions are where you need the extra weight on something tall like this shrubby form of okay. succulent. But this is very heavy and it's just meant to keep it from blowing over. So it's staying shallow and then the soil that you're using should be a living soil. Um, it it shouldn't be a peat-based potting mix like we do, would use for most plants. And it also shouldn't be uh, the, the cactus grit because not all succulents are cactus. Some of them are epiphytic like this one in nature grows in trees. So we want something that has compost in it that will hold moisture but also has grit in it. In this case, this one has angular sand and expanded shale and it allows really great drainage and good aeration. Their okay. roots need a Wait, lot of but aeration. How, what would we say if we go to the garden center and say like, how would we ask for that in plain English? Yeah, you would just tell them that you want a compost-based potting soil. There, there's good brands made by the ground up locally, by Arborgate and Tomball. There are good local blends that are really geared towards the idea that we have this you know, this moisture issue to deal with on the Gulf Coast. Okay, so let's say we get a wild hair, or I do, and I go and got, <laughs> buy some succulents and things, mm -hmm. and I go home, allegedly, to plant these. How, where would I begin, Angela? Well, we would actually begin in a case like this. Not all succulents and cacti are the same, so the succulents are pretty easy. They're gentle, and we can just trans, uh, transplant those into a container that's a little bit larger. Okay. We don't want to go too terribly large. So for this little size succulent here, I might go up and to a three inch pot. Um, when we come to something like this, we say, okay, now how am I gonna get that out of the pot and into there, because it wants to bite back. Right. So an easy trick for doing that is to use bubble wrap on a small specimen like this. Okay. We're gonna fold it so it's sort of in a strap formation. We're gonna get it as low as we can around the pot, and we're gonna twist the bubble wrap prevents us from breaking the spines, which are modified leaves, and they're part of the fun of, of growing a succulent. And then we're gonna lift it out of its container, and we can transfer it to this container, which Look we would have this. already had soil in. Okay. Then we can fill soil in around it and tamp it in, and we're okay. And for a really large uh, specimen, two of you could do this together with two pieces of bubble wrap. Or we can just call you. <laughs> you could do that. <laughs> uh, you can also wrap the entire cactus to protect it with bubble wrap and then believe it or not dollar store flip-flops you can put your hands in those and use those like you would an oven mitt so that you protect the cactus and your hands from getting stuck you my go. mind and is cactus blown. plants are great because they keep the neighbors away all right let's talk about watering angela right do you do you water on a regular interval well, because Actually, here in Houston, yes. when the rains come, I mean, we get soaked. Right. Actually, I do water on an interval. When we're not getting rain, once a week, watering them all the way through until water drains through the drainage holes of the okay. container is sufficient. If we get rain, you won't need to do that. If we get a light rain, sometimes your succulent containers can still be a little dry. So just poke your finger in there or use a pencil tip to make sure that the that about two inches down that you have good moisture. And again, the container must have a drain. Hole. Must have must, drainage. Must. Okay, I know we talked about this container for the soil, but are we doing something with this? What we is this? We are. You know, uh, one of the great ways to increase your collection is by propagating. And we can always propagate by little cuttings, and we would set this in a new container. It will root for us and grow a new succulent. But this would give us one plant, but if we take the individual leaves, we'll end up with a dozen plants. So 
I call this our propagation pizza. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to decorate it like pizza. So a shallow tray like this filled with our good media. When you want to break leaves off, it's good to break them to the side instead of trying to pull them down. They break oh. cleaner and you don't want to cut them off. Okay. And so you guys can take those and just finish decorating our pizza here. And that's all we do is that's put it here? All that's you need it? to do, right. This is how succulents uh, replicate themselves in nature. So they're going to form a little callus. A callus is uh, a cell that's going to allow that um, to form roots. And then they will, after they callus over, they'll send roots down into this. And once they've done that, then you can separate them individually and pop them into little containers. And the grow. roots, Angela, are, are they just tiny little roots that look like threads almost? They are. Very, very light white threads and sometimes pink. Sometimes the roots will be pink. There is so much to cover, and I know we have a limited time here, but very quickly, talk about your classes, because people can come and learn some of these skills more in depth. They can. In fact, I'm having a succulent class on Tuesday, the 24th, at 10 o'clock at the Arbor Gate in Tomball. Everybody can learn how to do this. We'll learn how to do little things like plant this little succulent container here that looks like a flower arrangement in a pot. We'll talk about how to mount some of the succulents on wood or driftwood. Um, it'll just be kind of a fun class starts at 10 o'clock and it's free for the and open to the public. Fantastic. I feel like I need you on speed dial. <laughs> Angela, <laughs> you're a wealth of information. This is very beautiful. I'm going to try it. We'll see what happens. That'll and we're going to share Angela's succulent survival guide on our website, HoustonLife.tv. I need to print it out. Thank you. Thank you.